Ed Donner believes in the power of purpose, and as the co-founder and CTO of Nebula, he's found his purpose by reimagining the job market to build something better with AI. This is Profiles in Brilliance. Hi, I'm Kelly Wenzel, Chief Marketing Officer of Andela, and with me is Ed Donner, co-founder and CTO of Nebula. Ed, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kelly. So can we start with who's Nebula? So Nebula is an AI platform that helps companies to source and engage with talent faster and more accurately than has been possible before, using generative AI and using other forms of data science. The way it works, is it lets companies come in and describe in plain English the kind of person they're looking to hire. No need for keywords, no need for buzzwords or, or booleans. And it will then look across 180 million profiles and surface the people that are best fit for the job. And it will then let you do things like craft job descriptions, interact with the candidates, drive a conversation, and have a pipeline through to recruiting them. Oh, amazing, and then what about you? So for someone who's not in tech, can you explain your role in your remit? Sure, so I'm co-founder and CTO. So the CTO is someone in charge of software engineering. I'm also in charge of data science. Uh, so my team builds the code that powers the platform. So if you go to nebula.io and you sign up and you try it out, you'll be using our product. My team has built that. Tell me about a day in the life. What does the average day look like for, for Ed? So one of the joys of Startup Land is that every day is different, of course. I get to wear lots of different hats, get to do different things. I find that, that about half of my time is spent working with my team, talking about technology topics, and about half of my time is spent working with my business partners, talking about sales, marketing, product. And actually, I think that's probably the, the hardest part of the job of a CTO, and maybe the most essential part, is translating between those two worlds. I have to, to help my tech team to think commercially and understand the commercial implications of what they do. And I have to be able to explain to my business partners the technical impact of what we're doing and why some things are a lot harder than they sound and some things are easier. Well, speaking of that, I happen to know that you have a patent. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so uh, my team and I uh, invented a model which sits at the heart of what we do. And it's a model which is able to look at the content of someone's career at their profile, and it's able to look at the, the English behind a job description or another candidate profile, and it's able to decide the fit between those two profiles and do it in a way that eliminates any form of bias from the process. And in some ways you can think of it as encoding the thought process of a top human recruiter. And it can do that at massive scale. So you can operate this across 100 million candidates in a few seconds. That was amazing. Now, I know also that you spent, I think, a little bit more than the first decade of your career at JP Morgan, actually coding, and then rising through the ranks. As you think back on that time, what guidance or advice would you have for up and coming technologists who are looking to progress their careers? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually, my first, my first answer might surprise you. I think my first piece of advice is what I, I wish I could have told myself at the beginning, is to understand that everyone's careers are different and everyone has different aspirations for where they want to take their career. I think I had this sort of firm mindset that the way to build a career is to manage bigger and bigger teams and to build responsibility in that, in that quite linear way. But I think in practice, things are, are more nuanced than that. There's a, a Japanese concept called Ikigai uh, that we sometimes talk about, which is about finding your, your reason for being, your purpose. So if I were to be able to think back to, to the early stage of my career, I would have told myself, try to take some time to explore different kinds of roles, try different teams, maybe try working in different industries and really get that breadth of experience before deciding exactly where you want to specialize. So when you think over your career, is there a particular leadership mistake that you have made that stands out for you that you've learned from? Yes, I think there is. Uh, I would say early in my career, in my first, first few years at, at JP Morgan, I was given a chance to be part of a spin-off startup company during the, the dot-com boom. And it was during that time where everyone wanted to be part of the dot-com and it seemed like it couldn't possibly go wrong. Uh, 
And uh, of course, that's what I thought. I was part of this startup uh, and for a few months, things were amazing until they weren't. Uh, and then, then the dot-com uh, crash happened, uh, the company folded and I came back to JP Morgan. But that wasn't the mistake. The mistake was that I was absolutely devastated by that experience. And when I came back, I felt like I had just wasted a year and a half of my career going through this cycle. And it's only now with hindsight that I look back on that and I think, actually, that's probably the most informative year and a half that I had in my career. And the kinds of lessons that I learned during that growth and, and failure is something that, that if I hadn't had that, I wouldn't be able to be doing what I'm doing now. My advice from that is I'd say to people, you need to be comfortable dealing with failure. And in fact, if you've reached a point in your career when you haven't failed yet, then you're not risking enough and you need to push yourself harder. That's amazing. So you're obviously like AI is part and parcel of what you do. Uh, and there's so much being said about it right now, right? Lots of energy and hype and talk. How is it impacting your business or your, your day to day? Well, AI is, is, is the core to what we're doing. So we're really fundamentally using AI to understand what it is that helps people to be fulfilled and what it is that hiring companies are looking for uh, in someone that will be most successful in their roles. So that's really working out how to use AI to further the job market is at the core of what we're doing. And we really see that we've reached a point now that AI is going to have a fundamental impact on the future of work. In the past, we've often seen that, that technology comes along with automation and we talk about jobs being replaced by automation, but usually that's been offset by the creation of new jobs that take advantage of the, of the new uh, technology. This time it's going to be different. I think this is something we're all coming to terms with. Uh, Goldman Sachs recently said that uh, 300 million jobs expected to be cut or diminished in the coming years. So it's going to be significant. And we think Nebula can play a big role in figuring out what people do in a world where there's fewer jobs, but we can be more productive and more fulfilled in the work that we do. Does this change your, your perspective on global hiring or, or trends uh, that you're watching in that space? Actually quite the opposite. I think that it lends itself even more to a world of working without borders. Uh, so as we stand right now, 80% of my engineering team is based uh, offshore using Andalans across eight countries in sub-Saharan Africa. We will be continuing that. We see that the, the use of AI tools is something which really empowers people. It means that someone with just a few years of experience can operate as if they have 15 plus years of experience because they're assisted by co-pilots that are able to give them extra skills. All right, Ed, are you ready? We're going to do lightning round mm -hmm. now. Okay. okay, bring it on. Yeah. Do you have a hobby? So my, my hobby is a bit geeky. I, I My guilty pleasure is still writing code. And in fact, I still like to do that in the evening. So my team disapproves a bit. I think they sometimes rewrite things that I've done. Uh, but it's what I enjoy doing. Uh, and I enjoy playing with large language models, which is the type of generative AI that is exploding right now. And in fact, over the holidays, I did a little side project uh, where I realized that, that on my mobile phone, I have all of the text message history that I've ever sent since I got my first iPhone. It turns out to be 240,000 text messages. So, as you do, I trained a large language. As one language, does. As one does. I trained an LLM on my text message history to see if I could produce like a simulation of me. I did work really well. It was really spooky. Uh, yeah, so uh, so that's the kind of nerdy thing that I do. And I actually, I wrote about it on my blog, but, but you could see the results are really great. And I've got instructions for anyone else that wants to do it too. Ed, that is nerdy. I love it, but it is nerdy. It okay, is. all right, we're gonna keep going. Ask permission, beg forgiveness. Okay, that's an interesting one. I'm gonna give you a twist to that. I'm gonna say, communicate, but ask for forgiveness. So I ask for forgiveness, but I'll tell people what I'm doing. So people can shout if they disapprove. Uh, definitely don't like I surprises. Like, hey, I like it. You're giving me the nuanced answer. What is something that I cannot Google about you, Ed? All right, so an embarrassing one. Back in the day, I used to be an amateur club DJ. I was, I, I, I think I, it was something that, that I always wanted to do. I'm not sure how good I was, but I, I did used to DJ back when, when there was vinyl, when you do this kind of thing. What is your favorite job? 
Uh, so my favorite job has got to be when, when I'm happiest is when I'm being a nerd. It's when I'm getting to do technical stuff. So I'm, I'm definitely in my dream job at the moment. Nebula is, is everything I would ever have wanted. And the times while I'm at Nebula that I'm happiest are those fairly rare moments when I actually get to write some code. That is great. I love that for you. I just want to say thank you. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you. And I am wishing you and Nebula like all the success in the world. Oh, thanks for having me.